This is the second um, video about batteries that I've made. Um, the first one was uh, about um, cell balancing and um, how uh, ATO3 or BYD batteries um, balance their um, cells. This is a video about the uh, BYD battery. It's a deep dive into it and it um, goes over everything I know about the battery. Um, may not be a lot, but um, it's a so um, hopefully it'll be of use to you. The ATO3 battery architecture consists of cells. These cells are 1.15 amp hours or 0.5 of a kilowatt hour each. Um, these cells are placed in blades. You've probably seen those blades. And blades are, are grouped into packs. There are 126 um, cells and they're grouped as three packs of 14 cells and seven packs of um, 12 cells. I could be wrong, but from my research, uh, from my calculations, there's about 4% of the battery held in reserve for um, uh, insurance against overcharging and, and overuse. Um, <clears throat> so if you take 1.15 um, amp hours times 126, that's 145 amp hours, less 4% reserve, 140 um, amp hours, 0.5 of a kilowatt hour times 126 uh, is 63, less your 4% reserve is 60.4 uh, kilowatt hour. This information is um, very helpful when you're trying to um, work out the state of health of your battery, which we'll look at in a bit later. <clears throat> Let's look at the um, battery management system. The battery management system is part of the overall management system um, and it monitors um, the battery. It controls the battery. It, it, sets the, it sets the heater and the cooler and, and um, whatnot. Um, but it also reports to us um, what's going on, how much battery power, how much battery we've got left. And, and uh, it does do a bit of a spin. That's how come we get 480 kilometres on a full charge. <clears throat> um, but it also talks to the uh, uh, um, the onboard diagnostics, which is what the technicians use to find out the true health and, and uh, operation of the battery. Because it's um, going to the uh, technicians and the uh, um, people working on the battery and, and that, um, there's no spin. So the information that goes to the onboard diagnostics should be spot on. So what information can you get from the um, onboard diagnostics? Well, you can get the voltage of the cells and the packs. You can get the, the lowest temperature, the highest temperature, um, a, a, a lot of different information. So let's have a look at this screen. Um, as you see, the lowest uh, Voltage is uh, cell two at 3.322. The um, highest, uh, sorry, the lowest temperature is cell 11 at 18 degrees. You've got the highest cell voltage at 93 at 3329. You've got the um, highest cell uh, temperature at 19, which is cell number six. This is a very interesting screen. It gives us the accumulated charge and discharge of um, energy for for both amp hours and uh, kilowatt hours. So what I did is I took measurements um, every 10% of, um, of uh, the battery. Um, this is the spreadsheet here. So I went from 90 for 100% down to uh, 5% uh, and got various data from it. They got the highest temperatures and the lowest temperatures. Um, and I monitored the charge and discharge <clears throat> over that um, period. If you look at the discharge in kilowatt hours, we've got 1,116 uh, is what I started with, and it ended up um, 1,188. Uh, 1, now, the problem is, is that's a decrease of 72 kilowatt hours, but the battery only has 60 kilowatts. So how could I have used 72 kilowatts? Well, if you have a look at the accumulated charge, I started off with 1,149 and, and increased it up to 1,166, an increase of 17. So an increase of 17 and a decrease of 72 
is 55 kilowatts. So it actually monitors how much the regeneration puts back into your system. And for those of you that um, when I said that the regeneration um, uh, settings makes no difference at all, it's just all about one pedal driving. This is how I worked that out. So whether I had the um, setting set at high or whether I had it set at standard, um, it would still have the same amount of um, power usage. Um, so it either had more discharge and, and uh, more accumulation or the other way around. So it still worked out exactly the same. So then I filled it up to 100% and I took this screen grab. And as you can see, the, uh, the discharge of kilowatt hours is still 1188 and the discharge of the um, amp hours is still 2948. So we lost, we, we lost no um, energy in, in filling up. Now you're going to ask, why is that? Because um, you often notice that when you um, put in charge, you, you put in a lot more charge in what um, goes into the battery and that's put down to discharge of heat while it goes in. Remember what this is reporting is how much the battery got filled with. It's not how much goes into the battery. It's how much the battery increased by. Um, anyway, so if you have a look at this, um, if you look at, 11, at uh, 1,220 kilowatt hours uh, minus 1,166, uh, that's an increase of 54 kilowatt hours. And if you take um, 300, uh, sorry, 3,028 um, amp hours and, and uh, take away uh, 2,893, that's 135 amp hours, which is exactly what we'd expect. <clears throat> so that, what that means is that the, um, the onboard diagnostics uh, does work and, and is accurate. Um, and that's going to be very useful for when we want to measure state of health, which is what we're going to look at next. <clears throat> state of health. What is it? So a new battery can charge to 100%. Over time, its ability to charge to 100% is reduced. So a, an older battery may be able to only charge 80%. Then its state of health is referred to as 80%. <clears throat> well, how do you measure state of health? Well, it's a fairly lengthy process. You have to empty your battery, then you have to fully charge it and see how much the battery um, took. Uh, if the battery um, retains what it had at, at, at new, then it's 100%. If it retains 95% of, of what the new battery was, then it's the state of health of 95%. So I've had a few people ask me um, how to get the state of health and whether the um, onboard diagnostics gives you that, and, I, and I've said no. And I've been told that, well, Tesla does it. Um, you just have a state of charge or a state of health on Tesla. And when I say, well, what you actually have to do is you have to empty the battery and then you have to fill it up and measure how much it goes into it. Oh, no, you don't. You just need to have um, a, a car that will tell you the state of health. So um, what I've done is I've um, downloaded a, a YouTube video of, a, of, and I'll put the link down below, um, and it, it gives you a snapshot as to how to do a Tesla state of health. So when you've seen that, then when I'll tell you how we're going to have to do it on our Atto 3, um, it will make more sense. The service mode, we're first going to want to hit the car icon here in the bottom left. We're going to want to go to service. So automatically my car turned off the AC. It has this red line around the screen. And then we're going to go to battery here and then we're gonna click high voltage. So you can see my battery health says 100%. And we know that's not true because I have, what, 53 some thousand miles in this car. Yeah, 50,736. All right, and we're gonna say health test. Before running this routine, save charge must be below 50%. We're at 18%. Vehicle must be plugged in to a level two, which it is. Test may take up to 24 hours. The battery will be discharged, then charged to full. Heat will be generated outside the vehicle during the discharge. So I'm expecting a lot of noise and clunking noises like if you're at a supercharger. And I don't need my car till tomorrow, so I'm gonna hit okay. And 
And it says test starting, you hit okay. And you can already hear the car. Oh, there's the fan going. So I'm just gonna close the door and walk away. And we'll come back tomorrow and see what it says. Waking up the next morning, it's nearly 7 a.m. As you can see, the car has completed the battery health test because it no longer says 100%. So after 75,000 kilometers, uh, his vehicle it has, got a, has a health of 85%, so it's lost 15% of its battery in 75,000 kilometers. So what are we going to do? Well, we have to um, do what Tesla does, and that is to, and what everybody else does when they test a um, state of health of a battery, and that is to reduce the battery, um, uh, uh, battery down to zero, um, and then fill it up. So the problem, with the, the, so how do we do that? Well, obviously we don't want to drive around till it's got zero. Um, so what we do is we, we lower it down to say, um, you know, 5%, a bit less maybe. Then we turn the uh, heater on or the air conditioner on full blast and um, wait for it to come down to, to zero. When it's down to zero, we then um, fill it up. Um, so we take a we take a reading of the of the um, accumulated charge from the onboard diagnostics, um, and then we fill it up. And then when it's when it says it's hundred percent, we see how much it's put in. Hopefully, it's um, put in sixty point four. If it's put in a percentage of that, if it's, if it's only put in 50, um, oh, I can't do the mess, but I, th I think you get the message. So, okay, so we know how to measure state of health. What can we do to prolong it? So um, let's call on our American um, computer generated voice. How to look after your Auto 3 battery. 1. Charge your battery to 100% at least once per week. 2. Where possible charge on AC not DC. 3. If you are not expected to drive the vehicle for a lengthy period, bring the battery to 50%. 4. After a lengthy idle period, fully charge the battery before use. 5. Do not operate in extremely high temperatures. What happens if you don't follow the above? Well, instead of 1.3 million kilometers, you may only reach 1 million kilometers. Yes, that might be an exaggeration, but it may not either. I've, I've, I have read that um, 803s um, are getting up to over a million kilometers. Um, but the point is that the 803 battery is extremely tough, much better than, much tougher than other um, batteries in other vehicles. So um, um, if you look after it, it will look after you.